So in lab three, the recrystallization lab, what we'll have is everybody will get a sample that'll look something like this. And when you look at your sample, you'll notice that it's not very clean. There looks like there's pencil shavings in there. And the reason why there it looks like that is there are pencil shavings in there with the compound. And all of the compounds in lab three that are used in my organic lab are all a nice white compound. So you can tell that none of the samples are very pure when we start. So what you'll do is weigh out about a gram to a gram and a half of whatever unknown you were assigned. And the unknowns in my lab are all the first digit. It always corresponds to what the lab number is. So this is lab three, unknown D. So make sure you write down the whole unknown code for your unknown. But what you'll do is get out three Erlenmeyers from your drawer. One of them will be filled with water. One of them will have a very small amount of water, just five mils or so in it. And in that one, you'll add your gram, gram and a half of unknown into it. And then the, the other one will have about five mils. And in it, you'll put on top of it a funnel. And on, in the funnel, you'll flute some filter paper. And for fluting filter paper, what you do is fold it in half and give it a good crease, fold it in half, and crease it real good, and then fold it in half, and crease it again, and keep doing this till you can't fold it in half anymore. And what you're doing with this is making it so that when you set it inside the, fil the funnel, it will not res sit against the, the edge of the funnel and the fluting will hold it out away from it. Now this one filter is too tall so I need to cut just a hair off of it. So we'll fold it up and shave just a little bit off the top so it fits underneath my watch glass. So we flute the filter paper and set it in there and then it stays away from the funnel so that we end up getting it to filter throughout the whole filter paper instead of just at the very tip of it. And then on top of that, put your watch glass and get all of this to boil. And what you're doing with the sample with the watch glass on top is getting the filter paper to heat up to the, the temperature of the boiling water or the, the liquid that you're going to be recrystallizing from so that when you pour your sample on it, it flows through the filter paper because the filter paper is warm and collects down in the, the flask you want to collect it in. If your filter paper is cool, what will happen is as you pour it in, it'll crystallize out of the hot solution as it cools off on your filter paper and then you have a larger mess on your hands that we have to deal with to get it off of the filter paper so you can get it pure in the bottom. So as we're going along and since the glassware gets hot, what you need to do, the easiest way to pick up hot glassware and have the best chance of controlling it, I think, is to take a, a piece of paper towel and fold it in half three or four times and give it a good crease. And then if it's too long, you can tear it in half. And then what you can do is loop this around your hot Erlenmeyer and then pinch it on the paper towel and then you can pick that up and you have very good control over pouring it and you can pour this hot liquid into your flask then you have your sample in to get it to dis dissolve in the boiling water and as you're going along you'll keep adding until all of your sample dissolves now your sample, remember there are pencil shavings in it, and the pencil shavings won't dissolve, and the, the graphite from the pencil won't dissolve. All that will dissolve is the compound. And some of them look like little blobs floating on the top of the, the solution. Some of them are little blobs on the bottom, and you just keep adding water until they all go away. When they all go away, what you'll do is pick it up, and start filtering it through your hot filter paper and pour it in. Be careful not to overfill your fluted funnel with keeping the, the watch glass on the top of the funnel and keeping your flask that you're filtering from on the hot plate so it all stays hot. 
filter it through. Pour it all in there. Make sure you have a small amount of water that you add into the reaction, into the vessel as possible. And then you'll add a little more to rinse it with, a very little, just a few milliliters to make sure you get all of your compound out, get it good and hot, swish it around in the flask, and then pour it out. And then you can set that aside. That should have nothing in it except for maybe the pencil shavings and you're done with that flask. And then when you're done filtering through your funnel, you can set this off, set it on to something, don't set it directly on the countertop. Your Morig book or your notebook is the best thing to set it on so that it cools off slowly. And as it cools off, your compound will fall out of solution, crystallizing, and leave it alone as it's crystallizing. The slower and, and, and uh, easier that it crystallizes, you'll get much nicer crystals out of it. Once it's to room temperature, and once you take it off, you can take the, the funnel and watch glass off. Once it's to room temperature and you have your crystals on it, you can stick it in an ice bath to cool it off to make sure as much of the sample as possible falls out of solution. And then once we've cooled it off for about 10 or 15 minutes and gotten all the solid that we can out of solution, we'll take that sample over to a vacuum aspirator, which is on the end of each of the countertops. And what you'll do is hook up the vacuum aspirator with a vacuum flask and a Buchner funnel on top of it. Now as you do it, set it so that it won't tip over, put your Buchner funnel on top of it, and turn on the vacuum aspirator, and it'll pull air through your Buchner funnel. And whenever you use the vacuum aspirator, be very careful that when you turn it off, you always break the suction by either taking the top off your Buchner funnel or taking the hose off of your vacuum flask. Or what will happen is if it's under vacuum and you turn off the vacuum aspirator, what will happen is it will suck some very dirty water out of the vacuum aspirator into your sample. Now in this lab, what we collect in our vacuum flask doesn't matter, but it, in other labs it will matter. So we need to be very careful about how we turn it off so we don't end up with that happening. So we take the hose off to break the suction. But as you filter it, what you do after this is sat in the ice water 10 or 15 minutes and it's full of your solid is put a little bit of water on or whatever you're filtering from on the filter paper in the in your Buchner funnel and then slowly pour in your liquid to not overfill your funnel and what will happen is it will quickly pull the, the liquid out of it. You'll need to get some ice water to rinse out some of this and pour through there and then when you get to that point and had pulled off all the liquid from it you can take the Buchner funnel off the top, turn off the vacuum aspirator, and just set this in your drawer. You can't do anything with it this week. You have to let it set for a week and dry so that you can get a melting point on it and identify what your unknown is for lab three. So you set that in your drawer, and then next week you'll come in and do a melting point on it as you have time with the lab that you're doing next week. And that is all we need to do for the uh, recrystallization lab, lab number three.